Welcome to We Are SC. Welcome to Five Things. This is Eric McKinney, joined by Greg Katz and Mark Culkin. Guys, we are talking about USC's dominant 56 to 10 win against Stanford. An unbelievable first half for the Trojans here. Let's get into our five things. We're going to start with our first thing, as always, our player of the game. Greg, go ahead and, and take it off. Your player of the game from this one. Well, let, let me think about this for half a second. Uh, who could you not pick but Caleb Williams? I mean, he is so good. It's ridiculous. I'll let Mark deal with the statistics. He's better than I am in that phase. But, you know, when I watch him run the offense now, tonight, tonight they really opened up the offense. I mean, they opened it up. And to see the way he deals with the options, he he turns it into a playground game. I mean, it's just absolutely entertaining to watch. I mean, you can get sick of talking about him, but, boy, I don't get sick of watching him. I can tell you that. And I can tell you right now, uh, Arizona and even Colorado, they're going to look at this film uh, since they're the next two up uh, on the schedule. And they're going to uh, raise some eyebrows and go, how are we going to stop this guy? He He's dynamite. I mean, he really is. Mark, your player of the game here. Yeah, there's a lot of players of the game, but, you know, Caleb Williams only played one half of football. And in the first half, you know, the, he, he helped the offense put up 42 points. Excuse me, was it 42 or 49 points? 49, 49 well, points. The special 49. teams touchdown. That's right. There was uh, so okay. responsible for 42 points. Caleb Williams played half the first half. 19 for 21, 281 yards and three touchdowns. Look, he's not perfect, but he came pretty darn close. There's Caleb Williams was the player of the game, and he didn't even play the whole game. You know, he didn't play the whole game. You didn't list everything he did. How, how about the touchdown run to kind of set things oh. off, that that physical touchdown run where he gets in and just sets the tone, right? This is a, a Stanford program. Again, it's not this Stanford team, but this is a Stanford program that has – run USC into the ground. If you look back at the last, you know, 10, 15 meetings, they've had games where Stanford has come in and just out physical a USC defensive front, offensive line, whatever you want to talk about. That was so symbolic for Caleb Williams to run over a Stanford defender into the end zone for that first touchdown. And, and it's Caleb Williams. And I think we've gone three games now and not really talked about Caleb Williams as our player of the game. It's, it's time to do that. I mean, like you said, there's, there's two more plays that go on his potential Heisman trophy winning reel again this year. He has another big scramble where he buys times almost nine seconds from snap to throw throws a touchdown that run he's blocking 30 yards downfield on a pass play that that he had I mean it's it's unbelievable it's unbelievable what he does and again you look at 281 yards and three touchdowns and that doesn't jump off the page if you didn't stay up late and watch this one if you're just comparing numbers in one half of play where you're almost kind of like excuse me scoring touchdowns at, at the end of that half where you don't want to run it up even in the first half uh just outstanding from from him tonight from Caleb Williams our second thing we're going to go to the play of the game back to you Greg what was your play of the game well with all due respect to Caleb uh I am going to say Zachariah Branch's 75 yard punt return for the life of me at this point why anybody even kicks it to him is the, you know, the, the definition of insanity why would you kick to him on a kickoff return or a punt return uh you know you mean prove your manlyhood, I guess, but uh, I, I tell you, he's going to cut off your manlyhood if you if you kick the ball to him. I can tell you that right now. He is, um, you don't go, go out and get a hot dog if there's going to be a punt or a kickoff return and he's back deep. I'll tell you that right now. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for sharing. Mark, go ahead. Your, your play of the game in this one. Actually, I think you mentioned it, Eric, when the Caleb Williams touchdown run. Um it's one thing to see Caleb Williams use his finesse and, and outmaneuver player, uh, you know, players on the other team and make them look silly. But when you lower your shoulder and push the defender into the end zone, as you walk over the end line, that that's sending a message, you know, Lincoln Riley said they weren't about sending a message at the end of the game. That type of play sends a message. We could talk about Zachariah branch, you know, hoping that the other team kicks it over his head and, by the way, I asked him that question after the game. It almost feels like he baits the kickers to try and 
you know, outkick the coverage because that's just giving him more open space. And you saw what happened. So, yeah, for me, you mentioned it, Eric. Caleb Williams going a bully mode on that on his touchdown run. So I like both of those. I'm going to go. We got a special teams. We got an offensive play. I'm going to go on the defensive side, and and I'm going to say it's the Max Williams interception between Bear Alexander again, just tossing people out of his way as he gets after the quarterback. And Max Williams with a good job to kind of stay at home. I thought it, it kind of exemplified USC's, USC's play on the defensive line all night when it mattered, right? When when the game was still in doubt. Their play up front and then the ability for the secondary to kind of communicate and be in the right spot again on the plays early when, when the game's still in doubt. And that is a big-time play by both those guys. USC goes down and scores a touchdown. They intercept a ball right away. They shove it back in the end zone, and that's done. That's the that's the game, right? I mean, they got to 14. Stanford never did. And and we were, what, five minutes into the game or something? I think that was one of those that just kind of, it's done. USC can do whatever they want in this one in all three phases. We go to our third thing, the expectation met. So what did you, going back to you, Greg, what did you think you'd see from this one and and what how did that play out? Well, I thought I'd see a route. I mean, they were 29 point favorites for a reason, but I think what uh, the expectation was is they did it so quickly, so efficiently, so almost uh, painlessly, unless you're a Stanford Cardinal fan. Uh, they were they just came out roaring beyond what my expectation was going to be. Uh, we knew there was going to be a lot of fans in the stands to fire them up, but they seemed not to worry so much that it was Stanford. Uh, the expectation was we got to send a message. And I don't agree that they're not sending messages because they are, uh, you know, they're, they're sending a message to the, the future teams that we don't know what the potential of this team is right now, because even on both sides of the ball, they are getting better. Uh, and um uh, I'm excited to see what the expectations are going to be next next time we, we play after the bye. Mark, your expectation coming into this one that was met? Taking care of business. I mean, it, it was a very methodical, it, they dominated. There's no other way to say, at least in the first half. I You almost felt like they took their foot off the gas in the second half. You're up so big. And it, it, it's hard to stay motivated when you know that literally if if they put the first team offense back out there, they probably would have scored every possession. You don't want to say the other team quit. I just don't think there's anything they could have done to stop it. I mean, USC even upped their tempo. That's how comfortable they were on offense against Stanford. I think that was it for me. You you heard Lincoln Riley talk this week. He wanted fans there. He talked about kind of the, the national audience and, and we want it rocking and all of that. He knew that it was – Stanford that it was going to be the first chance to kind of show people and I know it's a late game but it's going to get more eyes when it's USC Stanford compared to San Jose State and, and Nevada and he has his program right now where when he pulls the spotlight at them and says we're going to go put on a show they do this this team responds and they came out got on that front foot and just absolutely ran away early on and I think that's what you can expect now when USC comes out and, and plays some of these teams, they have that confidence, right, to just go out and do what they know how to do, especially offensively. I mean, I, I know there was still kind of that early three and out where you're like, what what's kind of going on there and, and a little bit of a hiccup. But, I mean, every other offensive touch in the first half ended, ended in a touchdown. I mean, every every other drive, it was – it's impressive. And, and at this point, there's just no underselling how, or I guess overselling how good this offense is. You just, it's the best in the country. I mean, I, I don't think there's, there's a real argument for that when, when it's going, it is the best out there. Fourth thing, Greg, what surprised you? Your surprise from this one, if there was one. Well, I thought there was a number of surprises. I mean, uh, I was surprised I enjoyed the drone halftime show as much as I did. Uh, it seemed like the people did. I mean, you know, you figure, oh, well, that's got nothing. Well, the people aren't tuning in to hear about uh, my feelings on the drone halftime show, but it was very entertaining. I will, I will tell you that. Um, I think my surprise was how 
fast they got out of the gate. I knew that, you know, they're going to, they're going to move, they're going to move, but it was almost like the tempo was so quick. I'm sure that, uh, you know, Chip Kelly must've been coming out of his seat in excitement, watching how fast they were going. Now, I, I tell you what, it was shock and awe for Stanford. They didn't know what hit them and everything was clicking. Therefore they could keep that base up for a while. I will say this, uh, the people that see this, uh, watch this game in the first half in the East coast, 10 30, if they said, well, I just stay up for the first half and watch it. Uh, boy, I tell you, Caleb Williams really sent a message that, okay, there you go. Because we're always worried there won't be enough exposure, but boy, if you're only staying up for the first half, uh, you had to be surprised just how awesome. And, and granted Stanford was picked last in the, in the media poll, for the conference let's not overplay it but still to to be at that efficiency rate that's pretty surprising that they could come out so quickly out of the gate mark you're surprised from this one i was surprised that stanford was outscoring usc in the second half until late in the fourth quarter <laughs> um that's the reaching <laughs> like i said it, 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 it's hard to find something to be upset about with this game but again when you or as efficient as you were with the offense in the first half, even when you start, you know, bringing in different groups of second, you know, backup, second string, third string, you're not going to, you're not going to have that efficiency, but still it, it almost felt like I, I, I said it in the, in the previous segment, they took their foot off the gas. Um, you see Miller Moss though. Once when they gave up that late touchdown to Stanford, that's kind of when they say, all right, well, you know what? Game's not over. We'll go down there and we will make sure we get one more touchdown. So I don't know if that was a surprise as much as I, I didn't think I would ever see a USC offense go scoreless in the second half. Well, almost go scoreless. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on the on the surprise. I was surprised, and and Lincoln Riley talked about it too in the third quarter, just offensively kind of disappointed. And and he specifically pointed at the the second team offensive linemen that went in and and Mason Murphy, I think at this point is kind of that swing number six tackle. And I, and I'd include him kind of up with the, with the starting group there too, but those twos and, and Lincoln Riley specifically said, we, we need those guys. We need those guys to play like starters and be contributors. And he was disappointed with kind of what they did offensively. Uh, and, and there was so much rotation early on. You saw so many twos playing with the ones, I mean, in, in those first few games that when all of a sudden it was, just the twos especially again offensively it it really did fall off and that was that was a surprise and it's look that that's such a tough spot to be in right I mean you're up the 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 game's been over you go into halftime you come out you you know it's just not competitive anymore and yeah you gotta you gotta shut all that out you gotta keep playing you gotta do all that stuff that's that's a tough spot to be in but still still surprising I figured Miller Moss, that offensive line, they're going to go out and and do well, and and it took a little while. I mean, it, it wasn't until all the way at the end, and you like that for Miller. You like that that he got in, uh, and and the way he did for that touchdown was a nice finish there. Uh, let's wrap ours up. Our fifth thing, the biggest takeaway from this one, Greg, your biggest takeaway. Well, I think they're making progress both offensively and defensively, and special teams. And that's what you want to see. You want to see them getting better. I thought defensively, uh, my takeaway was that they um, were communicating. I watched 11. It wasn't like 11 mutes were out there. There were there were nonverbal signs with hand uh, gestures and speaking and pointing and both sides of the line of scrimmage. And I think that's a good, good sign because there's going to be big challenges ahead. And uh, it's a comfort zone for a team. That's why they call it a team. It's not five fingers. It's a fist out there. And uh, I think as much as we downplay the exhibition season, if you will, I think they're taking advantage of it. And if they can keep making progress, even through Arizona, because let's face it, uh, Arizona will give them a fight. Uh, they got a good quarterback. Uh, but I think we're all kind of got an eye now to Colorado uh, and the insane asylum that Folsom Field will be. It's a sellout, and that's going to be where their communication is really going to be important in an away game. So um, I, I like where they're at at this point. Mark, your biggest takeaway from this one? How 
physical this defense can actually be. Uh, I was I was impressed with what they did when they almost like when they had their backs against the wall. They Lincoln Riley still doesn't think they actually scored that touchdown. So to see the defense late in the game making those plays, stepping up, not wanting to give it up, uh, that meant a lot to me. And to see the way that the defense set the tone for the game as well. You mentioned Max Williams and the interception. Solomon Bird seems to be it seems to be his spot now at defensive end. And I'll tell you what, to see the USC secondary bounce back, only give up 140 yards to the air and cover the tight end, that's a huge takeaway, especially when you know that Stanford's bread and butter has been, always will be. And they kept, you know, their leading receiver to what, 54 yards. That's impressive. That's a huge takeaway. Yeah, a couple for me, I think the explosiveness on in all three phases, right? You you hit the big 75-yard punt return touchdown. You hit the big 75-yard pass play. You get force f- sack force fumbles. You get the interceptions, right? Those, those are game-changing type plays that you need to be able to produce in all three phases. No, Stanford is not Oregon or Notre Dame or Washington or any of those teams. But you need to show that you can do that because that changes kind of how teams can prepare for you, I think, when you when you go down the road. The flip side, the biggest takeaway, USC's defense did so good bottling up that Nevada run. And again, we're talking about Nevada and Stanford and, and not those teams, but it, it got bottled up against Nevada. They played really well against that. Stanford got loose and it wasn't always against the first team. There were some backups in there at some times, but there were enough, especially that kind of jet sweep fly sweep around the edge where we go back a couple years when USC got gashed and gashed and gashed uh, on that kind of run. And then that was there. Stanford had that a few times when they wanted it. Lincoln Riley kind of shook off, you know, the the big runs that that got hit a little bit and he was kind of focused on the overall play and controlling the game and not giving up points and all of that and, and I think that's a positive but there's still you know the the 50 plus yard run the 20 plus yard runs in there I don't think after that Nevada game we can check that box at this point and say run fixed so that there's still something I think to take away uh from that in improvement needing to be made Overall, though, especially with that starting group on defense, it felt different, right? The hits felt different. The attacking, the viciousness, all of that, it didn't feel like the USC defense that we saw last year in, in big chunks and and certainly years before that. So I think that that feeling that they're playing with certainly was a big takeaway uh, for me on this one, but still those few things to to clean up there. Offensively, though, again, we talked about it. 56 to 10 and just poured it on Stanford uh, in that first half for, again, the the final Pac-12 meeting between these two longtime rivals. That is our look at five things from a USC blowout win over Stanford for Mark Culkin. For Greg Katz, this is Eric McKinney. Thanks for watching and listening. So we are SC and five things.